Of course, uh, Trevor, you describe the company uh, as a technology energy company. Uh, and we learned, along with our viewers, in terms of your uh, efforts in trucks and the hydrogen cells and, well, the whole vertical integration. Um, but let's talk finances now, since you are now going to be judged on your ability to continue to grow. You lost $89 million last year. You're going to lose money this year. When are you going to start to see real revenues? Our revenues all come about the middle of next year is when our big uh, is when our revenues really start rolling in. Our factory in Ulm, Germany comes online next year. Um, so the pandemic has slowed us down a couple months with the COVID virus. Uh, Europe still shut down. We still can't get to our factory in Europe. So once that opens up in Ulm, Germany, we'll be able to get going. So we're probably looking like just a couple month delay next year. Um, so probably third quarter, we'll have trucks rolling off the assembly line um, out of Ulm, Germany. Um, you know, when we last spoke again, as I referenced uh, in early March, when you joined just the New York Stock Exchange, you talked about an $800 million order from Anheuser-Busch. You also mentioned that there are orders that are many times bigger than that. Is, is that still the case? And can you tell us about any other orders? Yeah, there's a lot of really good, uh, good interest and a lot of good uh, customers that are wanting, uh, wanting the trucks. The hardest part we have right now is trying to figure out how to deliver them um, with the infrastructure going up at the same time. So for your audience, real quick, we have both a hydrogen electric truck that requires the hydrogen network to be built simultaneously with those orders. And then we also have the battery electric truck, which does not require the infrastructure because they can just put chargers on site. So the battery electric trucks coming off the assembly line next year will be delivered to customers kind of throughout the country. The hydrogen trucks, we're working on um, those locations. And why the difference? Well, hydrogen goes further than a battery electric truck does, and, and it's a lot lighter to operate. So they hit two different markets. So ultimately, it's just a lot of like juggling these different things, but we're, we're pretty close. We just ordered the largest order ever of electrolyzers that I know of. It was a, uh, an order yesterday. It was over $30 million for, to produce over 40,000 kilograms of hydrogen. We just made that order yesterday from Nell out of Norway. So we're already prepping our first five stations to be up and running. Um, we're breaking ground. We should be breaking ground this year on these stations. Okay. At what point would you share with us then uh, what you, had, again, had told me, that you were ready to announce some orders many times bigger than the $800 million order with Anheuser-Busch? Uh, we're close. And uh, I'll tell you what, as soon as we're ready to, to announce it, I'll give you a, we'll give you a ring so you can... Uh, we can we can revisit that in person again again, but it's it's close. It's really close. We're just trying to deal with a lot of logistics around um, with the customers, the PR, the everything else. So it's it's coming soon. Uh, all right, um, you know, clearly from what you just discussed in terms of your purchases, it's a capital intensive business. Uh, you've raised a good amount of capital, uh, Trevor. But are you going to need to consistently hit the market in terms of selling stock and or raising other uh, capital? Yeah, it is a capital intensive market, but what a lot of people don't know is this. So we, we don't, the most expensive part of our business model is the hydrogen network, right? It's also our most valuable aspect of our company because we're an energy tech company. So um, these hydrogen, these hydrogen stations, we don't just go put them up on, with speculation. What we do is we pre-sell a route. So we'll sell like 500 trucks on a route with that route. We can afford to, we, we sign the customers up with leases on the trucks. We sell the leases off. And then we can pay for the network with cash. So we definitely will have to go raise money again down the road. We raised a billion dollars, almost a billion dollars through this IPO and the um, um, and some of the other offerings. So we we have a lot of money in our account. We have no debt, but no doubt we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to raise more money. That'll come down the road once we hit benchmarks. And then the investors are like, you know, once they know that you've hit your benchmarks, they just open up their they open up their pocketbooks uh, when at that point it's just it's just all execution and that's we're right on the edge of that right now.